worship, oh Lord, to come and lay our feet down before you, oh Lord, because you deserve our worship. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We honor, we reverence your holy name. Lift up his name. Thank him this afternoon for everything that he's done, for all that he's going to do. We know 2018 is going to be amazing. Heavenly Father, we just give you all the glory. We worship your name this morning. We reverence you this afternoon, Heavenly Father. You are so awesome, oh God. So awesome.
in the city, we're blessed in the fields, we're blessed when we come and when we go, and I just want to encourage you that whatever your financial situation is, remember that late in the midnight hour, God can turn it around just like that, so if you believe it, sing along with us.
Father, today we declare by your word that we're blessed in the city. We're blessed, we're blessed, dear Lord, in all our fields. We declare the devil is defeated in our finances. For your word promises that when we honor God with our substance, the scripture says you will increase the, the increase of our bounds and you will cause our vats to overflow. We rebuke, oh God, every hindrance to abundance in our lives. You've said you will rebuke the devourer for our sakes and we stand upon your word. For everyone who has given the Lord, we trust you, Lord, to bless the offerings and the seeds of your people and to multiply back to them good measures, pressed down, shaking together, running over that you cause men to add to their bosom. Oh Lord, we trust you for those who are trusting you for a new job, for abundance and increase, for silver and gold belongs to you, dear Lord. We trust you to surprise and surpass their expectations. Let the entrance of your word, dear Lord, bring light and understanding to the simple today. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's appreciate courts. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Brilliant. Please turn your Bibles with me to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, as we share the word of God uh, briefly today. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. I said to you earlier that our watchword or our three vision words for the year 2018 is envisioning possibilities and transformational envisioning possibilities and transformational and I want you to start to look at these, these three words in every time in every area of your lives in the year 2018 how these words can become flesh in your life what does envisioning mean to you as an individual as someone that's still in God's waiting room before getting married as someone who is in God's waiting room before having your own wife, as, God, as someone in God's waiting room before having your own business, because I believe there are business owners here who are still serving other people. Envisioning is you beginning to picture in your mind where you could be despite where you are right now. And you may be thinking, how is that possible? But we're talking about God in you, the possibilities that will make this happen. But listen, when these things happen to you, it's so that you can become a social change. It's so that you can go to other people and tell them, if God can do it for me, he can do it for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, as I'll be talking about envisioning today. Proverbs 29, verse 18. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. But happy is he who keeps the law. Where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. In other words, some translation says the people cast off restraints. But happy is he who keeps the law. I was saying um, when I was, it was, it was such an awesome time because we used to have uh, a congregation of just about 30, 40 people at Wandsworth Prison. But today was the first time that as a church, we're now given the opportunity to now minister at a bigger capacity uh, that could take about 150. And today, we had about 64 gentlemen who came out, and when men began to sing uh, to the Lord, boy, it was awesome. You can imagine prison, and some of them were so hefty. And on one hand, I was holding the Bible, I was going like that. On the other hand, I'm thinking, Lord, in your hand, I commend my by spirit. But it was awesome. But I was saying to the gentleman in there that life is not a passage of time. Life is a gathering of experience. Life is not a passage of time. And how did I know that? I know that because Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 from verse 16. Philippians chapter 3, in fact, from verse 12 to verse 16 said, I forget the things that are behind me. I press forward to the things that are ahead of me. And I said, God has mercy for our past. He has wisdom for our present. He has providence for our tomorrow. God has mercy for our past. 
regardless of how you might have squandered or wasted the resources of time, the resources of money, the resources of relationship, the resources of your personal development, God has mercy for our past. Say to someone, God has mercy for your past. Because really, there are some of us that we're still tied up in the conundrum of what should have been and what could have been. Some of us are still moaning after, if only I had not gone out of that relationship or if I had not left that place of work. If you're still tied down with what should or could or would have been, then you will not move forward. Have you ever seen anyone constantly looking at the rearview mirror? Their insurance will be paying a premium very soon because they're going to knock the car in front of them. God has mercy for your past. Regardless of how much you might have wasted the resources of time, money, people, he has mercy for your past. But one thing is God desire that you understand he has wisdom for your present. The Bible says the sons of Isaac are the men that have understanding of times and what Israel ought to do. It's not just having an understanding of the times. It's not just saying these are my new year resolutions. It's also knowing how do I get there? Right, I want to lose weight. And I'm still eating pounded yam at 7 p.m. That's a, that's a wish that even beggars would not make. I want to have my own job. I want to have my own business. How do I get there? Where there is no vision, people cast off restraints. God has wisdom for our present. And guess what? He has providence for our tomorrow. He's able to do exceeding abundantly more than what we ask or think of according to his spirit that works in us. But I don't have anyone to help me. I was, I, I, I had to go and mediate somewhere in Kent a few days ago. And a gentleman was sharing the story of his life. He has just arrived to the country. He didn't have anyone and he wanted to go to university. He didn't have the money to pay for the fees. But he was doing some, uh, you know, messenger job at Evening Standard. He said those days, Evening Standard, people used to pay, f- you know, for Evening Standard. And he was doing a cleaner job, in, you know, at Evening Standard. And he said he walked into the office of their then astrologer. And the astrologer said, what are you doing here? He said, well, I'm a cleaner, as you can see. And the guy said, but don't you have a better place to be? And he said, well, I actually want to train as an accountant, but I couldn't afford it. The guy said, oh, okay. And then the following day, he came again, and the man said, oh, you're still here. Why are you here? He said, well, I told you yesterday I'm a cleaner. But he said, don't you have a better place to be? He said, yes, I would love to train as an accountant, but I can't afford it. And the man said, from tomorrow, go to university. I am going to pay for you to go through university, and I will give you a monthly allowance. God can touch the heart of anyone to sponsor you to whatever he's going to ask you to do. We oftentimes limit God to what we cannot afford or what we don't have. I'm talking about the one that made heaven and the earth. He has providence for your future. And if he's asking you to look forward to him, it's because he knows what he's talking about. When there is no vision, people cast off restraint. Sometimes we live our life as if we are the one that owns our life. He's saying, let me show you what I can do in your life. What is a vision? A vision is the bridge between the obvious present and the imminent future. It is the bridge between the obvious present and the imminent future or the future that is available for you. The vision that God wants you and I to have in mind. Because you find out that without vision, a lot of people prefer to take the easy way of life. A lot of people will prefer to take the, the pathway that have less difficulty, less discomfort, just because they couldn't understand what God was asking them to do. The Bible says Jesus For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. He endured the cross and he despised the shame. I don't mind waiting if I can see it. I don't mind paying the price of time if I can see it. 
I don't mind sacrificing my sleep if I know that it will be worthwhile. But I think where the problem is when we can't even see the future. And I'm praying that in 2018 that God will open our eyes to actually see. God said to Abraham, come out and look up. And I said a few weeks ago that you need to come out. There might be certain friends that encourages unbelief. You need to come out of them. There will be certain relationship that encourages sin. You need to come out of them. There will be certain lifestyle right now that makes it impossible to even see a better tomorrow. You need to come out and look up and let God show you what he's capable of doing in your life. Envisioning is not just what I see. It is the way I see it. It's not just saying, well, I have a better tomorrow. It is the way I even see my better tomorrow. Knowing that regardless of what I'm going through today, tomorrow will be a better place. Why do I need to be envisioned as an individual? Number one, envisioning will realign your misplaced priorities. Envisioning will realign your misplaced priorities. We live in a, in, in a time that there are a lot of pressures, there are a lot of uh, demands, expectations. You know, your pastor wants more of your time to come to Bible study. Your friends want more of your time. Even your neighbors want more of your time. WhatsApp, Instagram, Snapchat, all the chats and all of those things. There are pressure all around us. And so we find out that priorities have been misaligned. I mean, they've been misplaced. Priorities have been put out of place. So the issue in 2018 is not just, will my schedule be full, but it will be, what will fill my schedules? And listen, in the, two, in the year 2018, it's not about prioritizing my schedule. It is prioritizing what is important. Because people talk about, I need to prioritize my schedules. You could have a lot of junks in your schedules. But it is prioritizing what is important. I decided at the beginning of the year, because I looked at my life last year, and I wasn't pleased. I wasn't pleased because I set the target for myself that I would love to go away for at least, at least four times to go away on a retreat where I'm just away and just seeking God's face. But I didn't achieve the number of times. I had the retreat at home. I had lengthy fast. I had weeks of fast. But to just go somewhere and just forget about the church and just go and just stay there for a very long time, I didn't achieve that. And then I did a bit of evaluation because if you don't evaluate, you stagnate. I did a bit of evaluation at the, beginning, at the end of the year, and I discovered that what, what, what happened was that all my calendars, my schedules were already filled. And I was now trying to find a place to fit my retreat plan. And so what I did different this year was I first of all booked all my retreat plans. I now filled it with other things that are less important. Envisioning will help you to realign misplaced priorities. If you are believing God that this is the year you want to grow deeper spiritually, don't try to fit Bible study around other things that has already filled it. Put the Bible study and prayer time there first. Fill it with other things. If you are trusting the Lord that this is a year that you will grow economically, intellectually, fill the time that you will study and you will go to library in first. And put other things around it. If you're trusting the Lord that you will get to that managerial level, don't fit, don't fit it around your Nollywood time. Put the time that you will ask your mentor to give you the, the knowledge and the wisdom that got them to where they are. Put that time there. Book the time to speak to someone who can speak grace into your life. Book the time to speak to someone who can actually tell you the terrain not to take and the ones to avoid and how to get to where you desire to get to. Don't be people that do things as it happens along the way. You want to have a better relationship time with your spouse, with your partner, fix a day or two when mobile phones will be switched off. Decide whether it is Tuesday, whether it is Thursday, put it there first. If any, let anybody, whether your mother at law or your father at war, 
call you to say they're coming, tell them Tuesdays and Thursdays are my time for my family. Prioritize what is important. Envisioning help you to realign misplaced priorities. So the key is not to prioritize your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. To schedule your priorities. Because it's not every activities that means accomplishment. It's, it's not. not. It's not. So the second thing to help you with aligning your priorities or placing your priorities well is identify and set your values beforehand. The values of money, the values of time, the values of fellowship, the values of relationship, identify them and set them in the right order. The I don't, I don't know what's going to happen that will make me spend my tithe. It is not going to happen. And you may be thinking, oh, pastor, it's easy to say. My wife was out of job for a long time due to maternity and all of that. And there were even times that I had to pay, believe this or not, that I had to pay bills from credit card. Nothing would stop me from paying my tithe. Because it was a decision that I set beforehand. That if I decide to honor God first, let it be anathema if God doesn't honor me. Nothing. And today my wife and I, we could look back into our life and we could say, how did we scale through all those years we didn't work? I can't explain it. It was just his mercy. Prioritize the value of relationship. Some of you have not even visited your parents in a long time. It ought not to be so. Some of you have not spent quality time with your siblings to get to know them. It ought not to be so. Some of you, you're only praying in your, in your closet, trusting the Lord that the year 2018 will be a year of giant step. What are you doing about it? Prioritize your set values. Your values will reflect how you use your resources. The resources of time, resource. There's a... Uh, there's a principle called 80-20 principle. 80-20 principle simply means that they, if you properly maximize your resources, that is the resources of time, resources of money, resources of relationship, if you maximize it, 20% of your effort will give 80% dividends. But if you are careless with the resources of time, resources of money, resources of relationship, 80% of effort will only bring 20% dividends. Let's be people who are wise in the year 2018 that will, will identify, will prioritize what's important to us. Secondly, envisioning will strengthen you for purposeful living. Envisioning will strengthen you for purposeful living. The scripture says, where there is no vision, people cast off restraint. When you have an understanding of what God wants to do in your life, you're mindful who you share your vision with. You're mindful of journey partners in your life. It is not everybody that can journey the journey of life with you. I said to the men, I, uh, we have men discipleship group. And I sent something to them a few days ago. And I said, identify five people within your closest circle. Out of the five, everyone that whenever you spend time in their presence... They motivate you. They encourage you. They challenge you to godliness. They challenge you to become a better person. They challenge you to want to achieve your dreams. In front of their names, put plus. And everyone who, being in their presence, they encourage you to sin. They encourage you to disregard respect for God. They, they encourage you to become a lawless person. Put minus in front of their names. And spend more time with those that have plus in front of their names. And spend almost no time with those that has minus in your name, in front of their name. And every one of us, we have people like that around us. In 2018, envisioning will strengthen you for purposeful living. When you have an understanding that I am going somewhere. I have made up my mind I want to become a better spiritual person. I've been dealing with, with habits all my life. This year must be different. Who are the people in the boats of your life that will help you to get there? I've made up my mind that for so long, I've been, you know, all I've been doing is just struggling because I'm still paying university tuition and, uh, you know, uh, school fees and all of that. I'm just, just managing to live above par. 
Who are the people that will encourage you to greatness? Who can pray with you? Who can motivate you? Who can challenge you? The problem is a lot of us just want to be around people who can tell us the things we wanted to hear. A great person realizes that I should not always be around only those who tell me what I want to hear. I need to be around people who will tell me the things that I will find difficult. In fact, some people will tell you things that will make you to even go in anger, but if you are wise, you will realize they're telling you the potholes to avoid. And visioning will strengthen you for purposeful living. Please say to your neighbors, get your priorities right. Get your priority right because if you forget the ultimate, you become slave to the immediate. You actually start to see yourself in the light of where you are, but where you are is nothing compared to where God can take you to if you can only see the big picture. I don't know how many of you know Catherine Kuhlman. He, she was one of God's generals, but for six years in her life, she was living in an ungodly relationship. But at some point, the picture of tomorrow became, became bigger than the enjoyment of today. And she came out of that nonsense relationship. If you're in a relationship, whether an employment relationship or an emotional relationship that doesn't appreciate your worth, for how long are you going to tolerate it? What you need are people that celebrate you, not people that tolerate you. In 2018, the vision you set before you will determine the purposeful living that you live. And finally, envisioning will remove mental, emotional, and spiritual apathy. Envisioning will remove mental, emotional, and spiritual apathy. Do you know that procrastination is a problem for many people? I would do it, but it never gets done. But when you set a vision and you share it with people that believe in you, they hold you accountable to the vision that you set. And that is why I'm trusting the Lord that everyone in this church, one way or the other in the year 2018, I will be asking you, please don't say, Pastor, mind your own business. What, what's your business with my life? I'll be asking you, how much are you making? I'll be asking you, who are the core five people in your life? I'll be asking you, how are you spending your money? So if I come to you and say, brother, why are you not paying tithe? Please don't see because pastor needs money. I don't need your money to survive. The Lord is the one who is my employer. But listen, I should be able to take you to where you've never been, not because of your age or because of my age, but because of what the Lord has shown me. Envisioning will remove mental, emotional, spiritual apathy. I should be able to come to you and say, what, where do you see yourself in the next two, three years? Just because you're being paid salary now and just coasting through life, is that how you want to see your life? There's better to what life is all about. Procrastination definitely will be removed from our lives this year. So what should I do quickly? Number one, write down your vision. Write down the vision. Number two, set goals. Set the goals. The Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 to 3, uh, Then the Lord said to me, record the vision, write it down, that the one that reads it may run, for the vision is yet for the appointed time. It will hasten towards the goal, it will not fail. But if it waits, if it tarries, wait for it. Write down your vision. There's no point you say, I know where I want to be. No, no, write it down. There's something about writing down vision, placing it there, and you see it every day. This is where you want to be. Number two, set goals. Goals are simply the vision that are broken down in smaller, biteable size. Write the vision down, set goals. I'll give you an example. Right, my goal is that I want to get closer to God. I mean, my vision is to get closer to God this year. So how will I be able to measure that I'm, edging towards our vision, that one of the ways I'll be able to measure is that I spend more time in praying. I spend more time in retreating. Okay, my vision is I want to earn more money. I want my net worth to increase in the year 2018. How would I be able to measure that? Uh, the way I'll be able to measure that is perhaps I look for opportunities that are better than what I have right now. I look for people who can challenge and motivate me to greatness. 
I look for opportunity. There are a lot of free trainings on the internet. I find free trainings that I could go on that will make me a better person. I want to become a better spouse. I want to become a better partner. How would I do that? I find out more information about relationships. I read books about relationship. I read books about how to keep my mouth shut, even when I want to talk a piece of my mind. I cry to the Holy Spirit to help me to have the fruit of the Spirit. There have to be goals that you are setting towards your vision. Don't just set vision and in December just wonder, how come I didn't achieve it? It's because you didn't place the right steps in place to achieve that. Create plan to accomplish your vision. Create plans to accomplish the vision. Lastly, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, the mind of man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. The way the mind of a man plans his ways. So that some of you who may be thinking, well, uh, sister, what's your vision for this? I'm still, I'm, we're still waiting. No, the Bible says, as you fellowship with the Lord, he starts to reveal to your mind. It starts to give you vision. It starts to reveal and open your eyes to the things that it would like you to do intellectually. The things it would like you to do emotionally. The things it would like you to do spiritually. But he's the one that will plan your steps. He's the one that will order your steps. There's difference between ways and steps. Ways are the big picture. Steps are how to get there. The Lord will start to reveal to you different ways to get there. Please rise on your feet as we close today. I said number one, envisioning will realign your misplaced priorities. It's not about prioritizing your schedule. It's about scheduling your priorities. It's about identifying first of all, what are my spiritual priorities? Make a list when you get home today. Make tables, spiritual priorities, emotional priorities, intellectual priorities. Read at least one, for a start, read one book a month. You want to get to the managerial level and you're not reading any book about management. You're not reading any book about leadership. It just doesn't work that way. You want to have better relationship with your spouse or with your partner and you're not reading any book about it. It doesn't work that way. Be someone who is educated intellectually. Prioritize. Schedule your priorities. Let's just start to talk to the Lord. I said envisioning is God to us. Why don't you just say, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. Reveal your plans for my life. Maybe I've been undermining myself. I've been, I've been setting targets that are too low. The famous painter Michael, Michelangelo, he said, I will always aspire and desire more than I could actually achieve. Someone said, aim for the sky. No, I said to you, aim before, be, beyond the sky. The least where you could fall is among the stars. And you may be thinking, well, there are issues surrounding me. No, no, the Bible said we're seated in high places. In Christ Jesus, above principalities and power. If you have an understanding that I'm seated in Christ Jesus, it means my prayer is heavy, is downward. Because greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. I'll be talking about possibilities next week. That you serve the one that's able to do exceeding abundantly more than what you can, what, what you have or, or think of. This is the victory. This is the confidence that we have. If we believe that he hears us, we have the petition of which we've asked of him. Why don't you just commit your vision, your desire to his hands and ask him to show you his vision for you. And I think our vision must start from falling in love with the Lord again. Jesus said in, in John chapter 15, if you are in me and my word abides in you, he says you will be more fruitful. I 
I said to you a few weeks ago, at least identify three things that you're trusting the Lord for in the year 2018 as he opens your eyes to it. the Holy Spirit laid on my heart that there are some of you that are thinking how is that going to happen the Lord want me to tell you that there are helpers of destiny there are helpers of vision and what I perceive in my heart is that if you could just take the next 20 seconds to ask the Lord Lord align with me helpers of vision this year I just told you about my cousin's story how someone that he was never in fact an unbeliever because he was an astrologer an unbeliever paid his way through university and gave him monthly allowance I would lift my eyes to the hill from where comes my help my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and the earth help us of vision Lord Helpers of purpose. People that will come alongside my life. It's about time we start to be anyone that brings toxic relationships, toxic, pollutant relationships into our lives. Quality relationships in the year 2018. Quality mentorship in your life in 2018. People that will, that will strengthen you, that will support you, that will sharpen you, that will tell you off when necessary. Oh Father, we just lift our eyes to you today, knowing that our help comes from you. I ask dear Lord for my brothers and my sisters here, that you will take the veil that covers our eyes. The veil of the disappointments of the past. The veil of the rejection of the past that hinder us from seeing as you want us to see. If you are to take Abraham out for him to look up, for him to enter into his inheritance, dear Lord, please take us out of where we need not be and help us to look up to you. 
Lord, we're trusting you that in the year 2018, as we envision, we ask for the strength and the wisdom to write down our vision. We ask, Lord, for the tenacity and the grace to follow all the goals, dear Lord. And we ask, dear Lord, for the helpers of vision alongside our lives. Help us, dear Lord, to prioritize what is important. To schedule our priorities, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the praise. Let this week be a week of joy and gladness. A week of lifting and abundance. A week of sound health, dear Lord, in every area of our lives. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you now forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, have a wonderful week. God bless you.